Welcome back to Lost Test Channel. My name is Anton Vjeltsin. I'm an attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. If you've been paying attention to the developments in the Second Amendment arena, you already know that this summer the Supreme Court case Bruin came out, which significantly changed how we look at criminal statutes dealing with firearms. Prior to Bruin, the courts generally weighed the burden on the lawful owner of a firearm against the society's interest in keeping the criminal law on the books. Post Bruin, we now have a new test. And the test is whether the statute is consistent with the historical traditions of this nation when it deals with the Second Amendment. Since Bruin, we've now had a number of challenges to different criminal statutes. And we're going to see a bunch of these challenges moving forward. On this channel, I will try to track some of these cases down. And remember, these cases are in the lower district court level. So you're going to see some inconsistencies. That's the point of our judicial system. When you have inconsistencies with decisions, those decisions go up to the appellate court and later to the Supreme Court again to be reevaluated. And today we're going to look at the statute 18 U.S.C. 922K, which prohibits possession of a firearm that has a serial number that has been altered or removed. And the individual in this case challenges this statute and says that it's unconstitutional and the indictment against him has to be dropped because after all 922k as we see it today did not exist obviously at the time that the second amendment was ratified and so the individual challenges and says that this statute is inconsistent with the historical traditions of this nation. Before we go on and discuss this case, I want to thank you for watching me on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this recording on Spotify or Audible, please give this podcast a five-star review rating. And because we're in the holiday season, I ask you to go on my website at lostash.com and consider purchasing one of my t-shirts. I have the famous Do Not Arrest Me t-shirt on the website and I will also link a discount code under this video so you can have a little bit of savings during this holiday season. Thanks for watching. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Law Stash Law Firm at Western Region San Diego. To accept this call, press star. To refuse this call, hang up now. Thank you for using Kinetics. You may start the conversation now. Today we're discussing United States versus Randy Price, which is a district court case from the Southern District of West Virginia. Now, Mr. Price challenges 18 U.S.C. 922K, which prohibits possession of a firearm with altered, obliterated, or removed serial number. Now, prior to Bruin, the courts generally weighed the burden on a lawful possessor of a firearm against the society's interest. But we know post-Bruin, the test has changed. We're now looking at the historical traditions of this nation, dealing with the Second Amendment. And the court says that because the Second Amendment was adopted in 1791, only those regulations that would have been considered constitutional then can be constitutional now. Any modern regulation that does not comport with the historical understanding of the right is to be deemed unconstitutional, regardless of how desirable or important that regulation may be. Now, when we're looking at these traditions, we're looking specifically at years 1791, and it is the government's burden to look through the history 
and see whether there is a comparable law back in the day would, that would make 922K consistent with that law. Of course, we know that 18 USC 922K did not exist at the time the Second Amendment was adopted. We're going back through history and it is really the government's burden to prove to the court that this is a constitutional regulation. The court then goes through the history and we're going to attempt to do this here today on this video. Following the history, it is undisputed that serial numbers were not required or even in common use in 1791. The first legal requirement for serial numbers did not appear until 1934 when Congress passed the National Firearms Act. Serial numbers were not broadly required for all firearms manufactured and imported into the United States until the passage of the Gun Control Act in 1968. And even then, notably, these prohibitions were only on transporting, shipping, or receiving firearms, that is to say, when the firearms were in the stream of commerce. Even in 1968, there were no prohibition on mere possession of firearm that had the serial number altered or removed. In fact, it was not until the Crime Control Act of 1990 that Section 922 was amended to insert, to possess, or receive any firearm which had the importer's or manufacturer's serial number removed, obliterated, or altered, and has at any time been shipped or transported in the interstate or foreign commerce. Now, the government makes an argument that we're dealing simply with commercial use of a firearm. It is simply the requirement by the manufacturer to put these serial numbers on the firearms. But the court disagrees. The court gives two examples. For example, an individual purchases a firearm legally and then comes home and removes the serial number. That possession will then be illegal under 922K and that individual can in fact be prosecuted. So the court says this is not just a commercial aspect of the law. It actually criminalizes regular possession by regular law-abiding citizens. Because again, anyone can come home and take the serial number off of their firearm. And the court gives a following example. What if that individual passes away and in the will leaves the firearm to his or her daughter? Now, at that point, that daughter will also be federally responsible and potentially looking at criminal charges because she would then possess a firearm that does not have a serial number. And possession itself is, in fact, illegal under 922K. Of course, part of us wants to say that it is not that difficult and the burden is not that big to keep the serial numbers on the firearms versus the government society's interest in keeping people safe. We know for a fact that gun crimes go down when we can keep track of firearms using serial numbers. But that's not what we do anymore under Bruin. The Supreme Court specifically said that we're no longer engaging in this balancing test. Instead, we have to look at the history and the traditions of this country. And that's what the court did in this case. Because we're looking at traditions, the court concludes, it is difficult to imagine that this societal problem did not exist at the founding. While firearms then were not the same as firearms today, there certainly were gun crimes that might have been more easily investigated if firearms had to be identifiable by serial number or other mark. The government has presented no evidence and the court is not aware of any that any such requirement existed in 1791. 
because we do not have an analog from back in 1791. And serial numbers did not exist really until late 1900s, those requirements. This court says that Mr. Price is correct. 922K is in fact unconstitutional. And you do not have to apparently keep serial numbers on your firearms. Now remember, this is going to create a split. This is the first case I'm seeing dealing with this particular statute and serial numbers. This is the lower court, the district court. And so, of course, we're going to see similar challenges in other districts. And then if there is a split, that will go up to the next level, the Court of Appeals. Now, I want to finish off with this. Do you agree with Mr. Price that this is, in fact, an unconstitutional statute? And what do you think of the case Bruin and how we now evaluate these criminal laws? I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you're listening to the podcast version, please give my podcast a five-star review rating on Audible or Spotify. And again, if you're interested, go on my website at lostash.com and purchase one of those Do Not Arrest Me t-shirts. They're a great gift during this holiday season. And if you put in thanks 2022 into the coupon code, you will receive a 10% discount on your purchase. Thanks for watching.